Bonjour and welcome to Seam Allowance. My name is Valérie and on this episode we will be talking about my isolation mix. So everything I made in March and April of 2020. that like most of you I've been stuck at home for a little while now where I live uh, lockdown started on March 13th uh, but for the previous two weeks uh, things had been going pretty slow for me as well because first week was spring break so I wasn't teaching uh, and on the second week I had a small surgery and I was convalescing so I had a lot of time to make things so my first make is actually a knitting make. Uh, it's something I started uh, at the beginning of January, but I finished it in the first week of March. It's my first pair of socks. That's also the first time I blocked something. I apparently didn't get the memo that it was a thing. So um, yeah, I tried that. They're not perfect, but they're pretty comfy. This is a pattern I got for free on the Chops Design website, and they're called the Forest Walk Socks. And the yarn was in my stash for many years actually, so I'm not sure what the fiber content or the name of the yarn was, uh, but I'll link all the information I still had either up here or down there. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy. They're not perfect, of course. I made a couple mistakes and I deliberately chose a pattern that's very simple for my first pair of socks because I really wanted to concentrate on the techniques for the gussets and the toes and stuff like that. But um, overall, I'm pretty happy. I've worn them a bunch of times uh, already. Comfy. They go in the machine, which is really nice. And yeah, first pair of socks complete. My second make is a dress I've been working on since last summer, um, but I didn't finish it in time to actually wear it. It got too cold too fast. It's a magnolia dress by Deer and Doe. It's my second one. I made the first one uh, about a year ago for a friend's wedding. I can put a picture up here. And uh, so for the second one, I wanted to change things a little bit. I still made the flutter sleeves, but I made the short version, so it's more wearable in everyday life. And also I made the more modest neckline for the same reason. For this dress, I used an old bed sheet that I found at the thrift store. I had told myself that if I found something with polka dots, and that I liked, of course, uh, I would get it and make this dress with it. So. Here is the result. It's white though, so it doesn't film super well. Maybe you'll see the pattern better like this. Uh, but I'll post a picture up here of me wearing it. I haven't uh, worn it out yet because it hasn't been warm enough. But last weekend it was getting pretty warm, and so I'm hoping in the next couple of days I'll be able to wear it. Uh, but so far, when, when I tried it, it was very comfy. Um, I made, so I always make a little tag that I hand embroider. And so I made uh, a, size, a size 38, but I always have to grade it at the waist. Uh, so I probably grade it down to a 40. And then since it's a pretty uh, loose hip area, I just left it like that. And I also lined the whole thing with another bed sheet because being white, it's a little uh, transparent, so I didn't want to flash anyone. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much the, the, the changes I made to it. I put a side zipper, like instructed. Uh, it's a thrifted zipper too. And I also made a pocket for the other side. So since it's not a back zipper, I, couldn't, I didn't want to really make a second pocket in the zipper. I don't think I'm quite there yet. Uh, but at least I have one, and it's very handy. So my third make is a skirt I self-drafted. I, I was pretty happy with it. Here it is. There will also be a picture so you can see it better. Um, so I self-drafted a dress similar to that in February, and I just changed the, the pockets a little bit. So they're slanted pockets. Um, and it, the fabric is... It's kind of like a denim or a twill or a chambray. I'm not really sure since it was 
bought at the thrift thrift store as well. Um, but if I show you the back, so there's a lap zipper right here, and I put a little button. I mean a little like pointy detail for the belt. And if we look on the inside, I bound the back seam, uh, but I French seamed the sides. And then I used some black satiny fabric that I had in my stash for the inside of the pocket so it didn't get too bulky. And I did like mock French seams, well French seams around the pockets and then for like the junction here in between the red and the black it's kind of like a, I guess it's a felt seam. Uh, yeah, so everything is nice and clean and I embroidered my little label that I embroider every time and with the year I made it. Um, Valhalla, it's just like a pun on my on my name, but it's a, a name I've used for a long time when I was knitting things for people or um, just so I remember, you know, or so that the people I give it to remember it, it was for me. Make number four is something I've been thinking of for a little while. Uh, I made it, I started it in March, finished it maybe in the beginning of April. Uh, it was supposed to be a wearable toile. It, I'm really glad it ended up being wearable because I embroidered the colors. Uh, so yeah, that would have been a, a lot of time wasted if it didn't work. It's a Hawthorne uh, blouse by Colette Patterns. Uh, I made the short sleeves and yeah, it's a peplum blouse. And I also did my little embroidery shenanigans here. I made it in the size 4, but I'm pretty sure I graded probably to a size 6 at the waist. And that's the blouse that helped me conquer my fear of buttonholes. Uh, I had never made buttonholes before. Uh, I, ha I made like a couple attempts on scraps, but like never on really on an actual garment except for the two skirts but like this is at the front of the garment and I was a little scared uh, but turns out my buttonhole attachment for my machine is really simple to use it's super fun to watch because since my machine only makes straight stitches it's the buttonhole thing moving instead of the the needle zigzagging it's pretty cool uh, and I used buttons I had in my stash. They were, I think those were given by my partner's uh, late grandmother. I have a big stash of buttons. I come from her. And I'm not sure what the fabric is. I'm guessing probably some synthetic. The fabric was given to me. Uh, it was like in a remnant basket, but it was like a bigger piece that had been used already and was cut. And I was able to tetris my way into the leftovers and make a full a full blouse out of it and I still have some scraps I'm making masks with it and I'm sure I'll be making a couple more things with the what I still have left over so yeah I'm pretty happy with this one um, again oh yeah also I decided you know it's a wearable toile why not like embroider and French seam and do buttonholes and make self-bias binding also. So yeah, good thing I had a lot of time. Um, so the inside, there's like mock French seams. That's something I like to do a lot because it allows me to adjust still, but also get a, a nice finish. I often do that for the armholes, although for this one, it seems like I used the bias binding. And I used it all around the facing, down to the hem, and I, I hemmed with the bias binding as well. I like it because it gives it a bit more structure, so the peplum really like holds its shape. And it's, uh, it's something I want to make more of, definitely. I have a dress in mind for this one with a chambray. 
And I also have another blouse with a very special fabric. But that's gonna come later because I really want to perfect the fit first. Also about this wonderful blouse, I don't, um, I don't know if you can recognize what this embroidery is, um, but I'm a big Disney fan and I really like Frozen. And that's a pattern that's inspired by all the Rose Melling inspired patterns in the show. So I googled some images that they have. I think, I'm not sure if that's something there that's on their like wallpapers and like the core things or if it's on their clothes in the movie. I can't remember but it's directly inspired by that. And since the color is one of the colors that Anna wears quite a bit, I thought it would be fun to just do a little a little Disney bounding with the embroidery. Next is a bit of an unusual make. Um, one of my jobs is being a party entertainer. I'm often a princess and little kids are really intrigued by the big hoop, hoop skirts and I've had more than one just like lift my skirt without a warning so I made myself bloomers so that I would not flash anyone. Um, I don't know when I'll be able to go back to doing parties but I'll have them when, when that happens. They were made of an old bed sheet. I used um, an old pattern I, I had in my stash that so that's a new look 6203. I don't think they printed it uh, still. I've looked for it online but I didn't really find anything. Uh, I'd made the blouse way back when and I'd never used the bottoms but I thought it was perfect for that kind of thing because it's uh, an elasticized waist and I just basically chopped them shorter and I had some broderie anglaise trim which I added at the bottom and I also elasticized the bottom um, yeah I haven't had a chance to wear it yet uh, in the real world but uh, I'm really looking forward to it and I think I might be wearing them this summer also with like a longer skirt if I want to go biking or something like that. So I'm really looking forward to uh, trying them out for real. Okay, next is something I'm really happy with. It's another knitted uh, project and it was my first knitted sweater. I have been knitting for like 12 plus years, but I've always made smaller items with like a bit more intricate details like some fair aisles, some cables and some things like that but I've never made an actual garment that I, you know, and so I decided to bite the bullet and start it and actually I saw uh, on Vintage on Tap's Instagram she was making this sweater and I just fell in love and I went to Revelry and I, I just discovered um, Poison Girls page and I like everything there. So for my first one, I decided to start simple with a beauty school sweater, uh, which is only in stocky knit. Uh, but it was, uh, except for the, the socks that were kind of like practice for that, it was my first time doing uh, short rows. It was like, I learned a lot of techniques in, in this one even though it's only stocky net. And here it is. I really love it. The yarn is merino. It's by uh, Midnight Cravings. It's a company, I believe, uh, who is located in Saskatchewan, Canada. Uh, so it's not local, local to me, but like it stays in the same country uh, and I got it from a lovely uh, yarn store close to one of the places that, where I work and they were so lovely they helped me really well finding the right yarn yeah yarn is one thing that I find is really hard to buy in thrift stores or so so far I've only bought it new but I really try to be uh, conscious and ethical with what I buy so as the smaller companies, the better, the more local, and I try to make sure they treat the animals right also. Um, 
but yeah I found that it's really hard to find the right amount of yarn or you know or just actual good fibers in in a second hand shop so so yeah that's that's something I I still buy new but I really try to encourage the smaller companies so the sweater I made in the size small but I also graded it to be a little bit bigger at the waist uh, a lot of math was involved but I think I did I succe succeeded pretty well also what can I say yeah I mean my little label again I hope you can see that with the reverse with my little Valhalla it's the long sleeve which I uh, lengthened a little bit so it ends up being about here on me uh, and I'm short uh, and the like natural waist length would have been too long for me. Uh, the cropped length was a little short for my taste, so I went in between. I did the cropped, but I lengthened it by maybe like 15 rows or something like that. And it's really funny because when I was knitting it on the bus or in the metro, people would ask me all the time if I was making something for a child and I would tell them, no, it's for me and it looks so small that they couldn't believe it. But it's a very uh, tight uh, type of garment and it works really well. And it's so soft. It's it's incredible the, the difference it can make between blocking and not blocking. I'm floored. It was a lot stiffer and now it's so soft and also I was afraid that the sleeves would be a little bit tight so when I blocked it I, I stretched it a little bit to make sure that there would be enough room and now it's it's just perfect so I'm really really happy and it didn't take that much time like one would think I, I thought it would take me like a year to make that but I started it in end of February mid-February, end of February, and I finished it at the beginning of April, I want to say. Uh, there were a couple little mistakes that I needed to fix and that I procrastinated, but then uh, along came Me Made Me, and I was run running out of uh, Me Made Garments, so I did it. I finished it. Um, yeah, so it's not perfect. The color where I picked up the stitches like some are good some are not but I wasn't really sure what I was supposed to look for so that's all part of the learning journey and the next one will be better I was thinking I might might make another one but in the size medium just to get a looser type of fit I've seen uh, on Instagram I've seen people make it like very tight or very loose and they all look great so I might make another one that's a bit looser but also I really want to try a couple more of uh, boys and girls patterns there's the Judy Lodge sweater or something like that that's really cool it's a Christmassy sweater and the night before ski with like snowflakes and a really nice little detail in the back and on the cuffs so I think I might not make so much in the summer maybe like in August I'll start again so I have a nice new sweater for uh, for next winter my final make for the month of April was my first sew over it pattern. I've been spooning over sew over it for so long. I've been following their YouTube channel. I've been looking forward to the day that I would make a pussy bow blouse. And last summer, I was visiting a friend in London, and she happened to live like in a walking distance from the sew over it store. And it was my birthday, so we went there. I was so excited and I got a bunch of patterns which I finally got to make. The thing with uh, the Pussy Bow blouse is that it needs to be made in a very very drapey fabric and what I find at the thrift store usually is like cottons or like stiffer things that don't lend, lend themselves too well for that but last fall I saw on Facebook that there was a an indie designer here that was doing a sale of their dead stock fabric so I went there and I bought a bunch of I'm not too sure what the fabric is because 
it wasn't labeled and the person there couldn't really tell me. Um, it's probably some kind of, I don't know, crepe or something like that. And so, again, why? Not ideal. I bought this polka dot fabric. It's very transparent, so I need to wear a cami underneath so you can see my mirror there. Um, so that was my toile. Um, I always make my toiles wearable because I don't want to waste muslin or like any type of fabric. So I always make it in, in a fabric that I like and I hope to be able to wear it. And I mean, buying my fabric at the thrift store, it's not very expensive. So worst case, I'll give it to someone else or I'll recut into it and make something else with it. But this one turned great, turned out great. It's uh, a straight size 10. Uh, since it's pretty loose fitting, I didn't bother grading or anything. Um, so I just went with my bust and, and shoulder measurements. And the sleeves are a little bit long for me, so next time I make it, I'll, I'll, I'll cut maybe an inch or maybe more. Um, but the fa it was also my first time working with a fabric like that that's so flimsy and that frays a lot and that doesn't press well. So that was a challenge, but it I was very like delicate with it, so it went fine. Um, again, vintage machine, uh, straight stitches. I made French seams at the side, and there's a seam down the, the center of the shirt and so I French seamed that as well and then there's a little bit of um, hand sewing for the collar and the cuffs that's that's fine, that's fine. I, I quite enjoy that uh, and then at the cuffs there was a little rule loop and I used one of the buttons that came from my partner's grandmother as well uh, I've worn it a couple times it's a great type of garment for about, what, four weeks during the year because if it's too warm, it's synthetic and it doesn't breathe and you're not well. And if it's too uh, cold outside, you're just freezing. But these days is a great time to wear it. I was wearing it this weekend and it was, it was perfect. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy with it. I want to make, I have at least two more versions planned. Um, oh yeah, this one is, I think that's the version B with the lower neckline, but I want to make the uh, higher one. I have another fabric like this one, but it's blue with white polka dots, so I'll shorten the sleeves and change the neckline. And then I have another fabric that's green, sort of like a, a green close to the, the green blouse I showed you. So I'll have three and that should be plenty. Uh, I was really happy. It was my first silver pattern, and I'm, I'm really excited to make the other ones I have. So that concludes my makes for March and April of 2020. Uh, honestly, for me, that's a lot of things. Usually it takes me a long, long time to finish one thing, and had we not been on lockdown, all of that would not be here. Uh, especially with the embroidery and all of the smaller touches that I like to add to my to my garments. I don't think it would have happened, um, but I had time, so I made the most of it. And so I'm really, really happy with all my garments. Um, as I said, I'm planning uh, second and third versions of most of these things. And I've already, uh, production for May is going really well, but I think I'm gonna keep that for the end of Me Made May. Um, we're still on, lo on lockdown here, but I wanted to make a separate uh, May video. So I hope you enjoyed all of this, and I hope to see you again very soon. Stay safe and keep sewing. Bye!